Hiya guys and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. Oh, I can see in my uh, viewfinder my glasses haven't lightened up again yet. Uh, it takes a minute or two when I come in from the sunshine. So, um, yeah, Easter weekend. We've had a nice bit of sunshine. It's still sunny out now, although it's going colder. I think we're supposed to be due for snow tonight. Uh, this is Easter Monday when I'm recording this intro. So, um, as the title suggests, we're going to be getting straight on with the cylinder. Now, there's a fair bit of work in this cylinder, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be like uh, the cylinder part one and part two, something like that. Um, I've been trying to intersperse other videos in between um, so that it's not all, um, you know, Stuart models related on the channel. Anyway, um, so this cylinder, um, first thing I'm going to do, there's a few bits of flashing. Let me just show it to the camera. You can see around the valve ports, there's a few bits of flashing. Um, it's a bit out of round on the casting details on the end with a bit of flashing around. So straight to the base and file off the bits of flashing. So I've mounted the uh, <laughs> new base, uh, or the base with the soft drawers, just temporarily with a G-clamp on the end of the bench. Not sure if it's going to live here. I'm going to try it here, see how I get on with it. If I don't like it, I can put it somewhere else. So that's why it's just held on with a G-clamp for now, rather than drill holes in the bench at this stage. I've got a nice big file here and a file card. Um, well, as you can see, um, I've got more hair than this file card's got teeth. But uh, yeah, okay, so just I try and keep my files fairly clean. Just taking out any debris that might be in the file before we start. Um, yeah, this is pretty grubby. Just get the worst of the debris out. Okay, so I'm just going to remove the flashing off the top of here. So let me find a nice... You get the general idea. I'm just going to take this uh, flashing off. Shouldn't take a lot. point out something with this feature. Um, the steam ports and the exhaust port are cast into the casting, uh, you know, from new. Um, okay, we've got that surface as much as I want to do. Um, yeah, so um, when they come to the overall length, Obviously, it's going to be a set length for the cylinder and a set bore. So, what I need to do is reference however much I take off either end from that centre port. I'll do a quick measure to make sure these are all pretty uniform. But from that sort of centre port, which is a fixed point, um, you know, in the middle of the cylinder, which is where that port's going to be. So, I need to evenly remove material off the ends in relation to that centre port. So, that's something to bear in mind going forward. So again, on the end here, as you can see, a load of the uh, flashing, you can see where the uh, casting was filled there. So file over the top just to clean that up exactly the same as I did on the port. Just trying to keep this file flat to the general surface here. You can see I'm just touching here now, so I need to remove a bit more of this side. There is a slight step in them, and this space seems to drop away. So I'm hoping that there's enough material in here. Oh, there's something hard in there, I can feel it. I think I'm going to leave it at that for now and I think I'll do exactly the same this is much better just a couple of lines again I think that will do for that a um, few lumps and bumps around this circumference here I'm going to want to clock up on these two to get myself somewhere around a centre point so I will just dress up any lumps and bumps around here to make it easier for the clock um, there's a little mismatch there and there's another one there it's just putting it 
around this way. Yeah, there's quite a big mismatch there. Whoop. Same that end. Just using my finger as a guide here. Okay. As you can see, I've just blended the intersections of the castings together. And under side, one either end. Yeah, same this side. Okay, just have a quick look around this now. I think I've got all the major flashings off. So the next thing I do, I'm going to have a measure up and get myself a bit of a gauge point to see which end's got the most to come off. This end looks thicker, but we'll see. So uh, I'm trying to work out how to hold this for the best. Obviously, I'm holding in a four-jaw chuck on the round register on the end um, using some aluminium packing. I've clocked up this um, it is a bit egg-shaped, but I've done four corners, so top and bottom are equal, side to side are equal, uh, lining up the jaws on the top. So I basically, I'll take a measurement there, spin round 180, take a measurement there, and those two are equal. And again, even though that's where the intersection point was, on the top here I got an equal, and on the bottom I got an equal. So to check um, that it's not just this end, and that end isn't throwing out a mile, I did try holding it on the squares first of all with some aluminium but it didn't give me anything to reference i could get the end running true but i didn't know what's going on this end i can actually see this end running if i started up slowly but i thought what i'd do is give myself a clocking reference across here and across here so i'm actually holding the camera in my hand here um and i'm going to struggle to uh, bear with me two seconds i'll just lift that clock on top i need Okay, so, um, yeah, I think I forgot to turn the camera back on, but we know we're, we're flat here. This is running true. This is running true. And everything is within a sort of thou or so. Um, this diameter here is egg-shaped. Um, if I measure across the small side, it's, it's pretty much on nominal. I think it's 1.094 thou. Uh, an inch and um, nine... What was it? Let me have a look. I've got a draw in there somewhere. Inch and 94 thou. Um, and it's measuring up an inch and 94 now. So I think I am going to have to skim this diameter, but I can make the end caps match. Uh, but I think I will skim this diameter. And of course, when I do the bore, I'll be doing the face to a reference known from the center of the three valves. So the face and the bore in one go. So I know I've got a true reference of face and bore at 90 degrees to each other. So I've just done a little sketch so I don't mess this up. Overall length of the part, inch and five eighths, 1.625. Um, okay, so half of that, the centre line would be 0.8125. The little slot at present is 108 thou wide. So that distance there, half of that would be 54 thou. So if I take 54 thou from 0.8125, gives me 0.7585. So that would be my caliper measurement from there to the end of the part when I faced it off. So, yeah, that pretty much gives it me, and then obviously I can machine the overall length on the other end to 1.625 afterwards. So I did a scratch pass on here, um, well, basically touched off, took 10 thou and scratched it, it half cleaned up. Did the same again till it cleaned up, measured, and as it stands at the moment, there's about 15 thou left on it. So I'm going to take 5 thou off, while they're running at 380 RPM. That's going to leave about 10 thou on. Um, I'll show you my method in a moment. So just a gentle face across there. That should leave me at around about 10 thou. 
Um, so basically all I do is grab my calipers and I'm measuring that distance I've given myself and that's measuring 767 um, so yeah 7 767 and a half so that's 9 sow okay so I know it's 9 sow on there I think I'll swap the boring bar now and we'll start boring it out. So I'm just taking a touch and a quick measure. It's 570. It's got to be 5 eighths. So I know I've got 55 thou in total to come out. Um, you know, ish. Um, so I'm basically going to take, let's say, I don't know. 10 thou aside. I'm going to take 20 thou out in one cut. Um, now I am going to turn my feed on for this and you will hear the feed motor running That's what the noise the whiny noise in the background is I'll show you that but I do have a plan to change it over to a NEMA 23 motor Very similar to the power feed on the milling machine. So uh, this uh, the parts are ordered That'll be a project coming up uh, to get rid of that horrible racket So uh, let's have a look Let's say I don't know, 450 RPM. Wait for the noise. Yeah, and that noise you can hear is the power feed. So yeah. Quite an aggressive feed, but I am roughing out. series of passes through here um, forward and reverse speeding um, taking out spring passes that sort of idea um, it turned out that I took two final three thou cuts and as near as I can appreciate measuring it with a telescopic on the good mic I'm at 625 and the finish is quite nice I am going to put a hone through here and when I make the piston I'll be using this as a gauge for the piston uh, the bore of this is a gauge for the piston so uh, that's something we will be doing. Right, um, I need to take the final 10 sow off this space now. I'll just come back and double check to get this distance right. And I think I am going to have to clean up this OD of this circle to make it right. Because it's it's all shapes. When I put the end cap on, it's just not going to look right. Um, so I will be doing that. So back to the turning tool now and we'll get that done. So I'm pretty sure that dimension was 7 thou. I'm just going to take a 3 thou cut off here. And we'll have a measure. Okay. Let's just set a zero there. Where's my calipers? Can't remember what distance I was aiming at. That's seven six three. What was I aiming for? Seven five eight. Let's just double check. Seven six two. Okay, another four thou. Okay. So that should be the final size for the bore on this end. Okay, and yes, we're going to chew up this OD. So let me set myself a stop position. Let's have a look here. Um, I don't really want to machine this here. We'll have a look at it as we turn it. So let's just touch off. There's a touch, take a couple of thou, let's have a look. I'm going to call that depth on distance. Take another three thou aside. Just 
see if that's cleaned up. Not quite. Another couple of thou, I think. There we are. Into my zero. Back out. That's quite a nice finish on there for hand feeding. There's just a few little witness marks around the OD. I'm going to get rid of those. Maybe another couple of thou. And when we come to make the end cap, we'll make it to suit this diameter. Should pretty much have done it. Yep, that's cleaned it up all the way around. There's a tiny little fillet in there. I think I'm gonna have to dress that off by hand. And the same on this side with the radius of the cutters not quite there. In fact, there's nothing on this side. It all seems to have come out on this side. So can I go back with my shoulder a couple more thou? I can, I'm going to do that. That's my zero. That was another four thou. I think I probably need to do the same again. Okay, that's better. Yep. <coughs> so, <coughs> I think a very tiny chamfer on the OD a bit, but you know, I'm talking a break edge just to remove the sharpness. So we'll do that. Let's throw it down a touch. Just a tiny. That'll do that. Yep, just breaking the edge. And I think the same on the inside. Now I believe the cap has got a little register which sits in here and through the gasket. So, um, you know, I think just a, an oil stone break edge will do for that. Just to take away the sharp edge. That's it. Yeah, just so we haven't got a, a dead sharp edge on there. So, that's the boring face done. Um, I think we'll take the whole part out of the chuck now and go to the mill. So I got quite lucky. Um, I've got the part sat down on the machine face, hard on a parallel. The rear face is actually <laughs> square to it. It has got a bit of a dome in it, um, but it's holding flat and square to the bottom. So I've just put a piece of round bar in the V in my jaw and squeezed it back, tightened the vise, tapped it down, um, you know, a little tap with a little rubber mallet on the top, and the parallel is lock solid. So what I'm going to do, let me just bring you out a bit. Um, yeah, you can see where I am. Um, yeah, um, I'm down pretty far with the head. I'm just going to bring the quill down, touch the cutter on the parallel, lock off the quill, I'll set a zero on the quill, then I'm going to zero the z-axis on my DRO. Let's just make sure I'm in inches, which I am. Um, I've zeroed the z-axis, so I'm going to wind the z-axis up. In fact, I can use power feed. And I'm looking for 1.625. An inch and uh, 5 eighths is the overall length of the part. So I'll probably go up like, you know, inch 680, something like that. And I'll bring it down, in fact that's, that's somewhere near. Um, I'll bring it down and machine this off until I get to my reference of inch and five eighths. Just taking a scratch off it, I wound it down another 10 thou and I'm at 1.660 now.
I'm just going to wind around the periphery then using two hand wheels basically moving in X and Y okay so drop down again to 1.650 there same again till I reach my 1.625 I'll probably stop at about 1.630 I'll get a depth mic out and just measure down to the parallel just to uh, confirm my dimensions I left it a thaw up, I've measured it with a depth mic, the depth mic confirmed I'm a thaw up, so this should be the final thaw off this surface. There we are, that's it finished, both sides square parallel to the ball. So a little bit of a cheat in this setup again. Um, I've put the part in on the two machine faces, it sits beautifully in the vise, it almost confirms that they're square. Um, I've set the plane of this side of the casting up on a 1-2-3 block, which is fairly square to this plane, so that's good. I could have swept the clock across the top here, but easier to use a 1-2-3 block or an angle plate, something like that. Now, I've placed the part in the vise, sat on a 5 sixteenths reamer. Now, the shank of this is actually one thou under size. We'll make allowances for that in a moment. But it basically tells me that the top of the vise is on the centre of the hole. And my dimension is given from the centre of the hole. So we'll allow for the one thou, and we know that the dimension, which is, let me just see, um, can't see it on the drawing. I will see it at any moment. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. You know, I can't see it. I'm sure it's 5 eighths, but uh, we shall confirm this momentarily. It is 5 eighths from the centre of the hole. So again, I can touch on the top of the vice, uh, bearing in mind that the vice is actually a thou high. So um, based on the pin, you know, the job is a thou too far down. So I'll have to take an extra thou based on that. So yeah, bring the quill down, touch the cutter. I've just made sure there's no debris under the cutter. Touch it on the vise, finger pressure, lock the quill, set the quill to zero. That's not moving in relation to the head now. So wind the head up. I'm just going to set Z0 on my DRO and I can wind up on the quill by 0.625 will be my finished size. So, uh, where are we? 670. And... Uh, There's 45 thou left on. I've just taken a scratch pass. And it's probably going to clean up with about 30 thou left on. So the mismatch in the castings is taken more off this side. That's why I use these two as a reference because they're cast as one. So, uh, yeah. Let's get this done. Okay, tricky bit. Um, these three slots in here uh, don't conform to the finish sizes on the drawing. Um, this central slot is shown as an eighth wide. It's more like 332, something like that. Um, it's certainly underneath an eighth milling cutter. It won't go in there. The length of the slots squared up is shown as 932 and they are under length as well let's have a look no, I'm on the wrong side of the rule they're about a quarter so they, they are under by you know a 64th either end um, and these slots um, 
they're approximately two mil. They're not far off on width. I could use a two mil cutter and elongate them. The depth of the slots is not shown on the drawing, what the depth should be, not shown at all. Um, so that would have to be scaled off the drawing. And according to the drawing, if I scale it off, it's about, yeah, it's about 532. Um, and they're nowhere near that at the moment, I don't believe. I can check that. Um, but yeah, so I think I'm going to have to find the center of the world around here and machine these three little slots out. But not a problem. Um, very important I don't go over width and that I get them on the correct centers. Um, the, the width of the slots and the positions, the sort of lengths are all shown. Um, they don't give the slot widths. They give a sort of a width of the inside slot and then a width across the inside faces of the outside slots and a width across the overall in which you've got to work out the slot width, but that's, that, you know, that's simple enough. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to get an 8 cutter up. Um, I'm going to centre find with a wobbler this space and this space to give me centre of the world this way. I think I'm probably going to touch on my dowel pin either side, or my uh, reamer either side, and centre up on that to give me a zero zero in the centre for my 8 cutter. And I can pretty much plunge it into depth or, you know, a series of left and right swipes uh, going down to that depth. I'll double check everything and I can machine the centre one. I have got a 2 mil cutter. I can work out the dimension either side and machine those out to the same length and same depth. Um, so I am going to do that. Um, they do look undersized and they've got like a, a big radius in the bottom at the moment. They're not a flat bottomed pocket, um, which the drawing shows them as. So, yeah, I think I'm going to have to do that. No problem. We shall get on, get that set up and get it done. So that's the centre slot machine. Um, an eighth cutter, smack down in the middle. I did a series of pecks down in. I sort of went 100 thou deep. It's 3 16 steep, um, scaled off the drawing on what it needs to be. So I came in the centre and I basically kept off setting 10 thou and pecking down to 3 16 onto a stop. Um, then I traverse back and forth from the zero in the centre point by 78 thou uh, with the eighth cutter. 78 thou left, 78 thou right. And that gave me the overall width of the slot at the 932 where I wanted to be. Now the next dimension um, is given, in fact two dimensions, the inside and outside of this. And I worked out it's approximately 2 mil. And a 2 mil cutter, well, it'll fit in the slot. It's a little snug, but it does fit. Anyway, what I've got is a dimension from the centre line to the outside or a dimension from the centre line to the inside, inside, whichever one I want to pick. It doesn't make any difference nominally with a 2 mil cutter. So I'm going to set the 2 mil cutter up on centre now, work out the offset, bearing in mind I've already come 39 thou as it were with 1 mil, half the cutter, uh, work out the offset to this outer face and then I'll have to offset a different amount. amount. It's a different depth. I'll do a quick bit of working out on a piece of paper and come back to you, but I'll show you my working out for, uh, well, in fact, I just explained my working out for the centre one. So I'll uh, I'll do a little sketch first so I know where I'm going to be, and then we'll go about cutting these next two slots. And basically, whatever I do for this one, it's the inverse offset the other way for this one. So on the drawing, the outside of the two slots is given as 7 sixteenths across the outsides, Okay. So from the centre line, 732 up and down. Now my cutter is 2mm. Um, so you're looking at half of the cutter I've already moved across, which is 1mm, 39.5 thou. So 7 sixteenths minus the 39.5 thou is 0.1795. So to come up with the outside of the cutter in the correct place, I need to step from centre up 0.1795, and I do exactly the same down this way. So on another note, let me just bring the paper up. Um, slot being 932, half the slot width, 964. Again, one, uh, two mil cutter. So 964.1406 minus the 0395 gives me 0.1011. So my left and right offsets are going to be 0.1011 either side of zero. So happy days. We've got some figures to work to. Um, we're going to be working in the blind. We can't see a lot here. I've got the 2mm cutter set up, have I? No, not yet. 
I got a brand spanking new one here so we'll set that up get back onto the original zero and get ready to cut so I'm back on zero zero I just touched down to get a zero for depth and set a zero on my quill the arrow um, right okay so oh, it reminds me I haven't locked the head um, 156 that deep with these slots and from zero zero in the center here my offset 1795 so I can do that on the DRO which is bear with me don't want to overshoot it there. okay so that is now central on the outer slot so I need to plunge down 156 I'll probably go to 100 first and then work my way back and forth uh, 101 uh, just over 101 thou in either direction so start the cutter up and let's do this I don't know how well you can see it yes you can see the end of the cutter it's just touching either side of the slot in fact that's a hundred deep so I'll just undo my x-axis and step towards you with the part that's 50 60 70 80 gently now it's cutting in the ends 90 101 now back the other way, doing exactly the same thing. To 101. Then drop down. What depth? 156. I think I'll go 130 first. Back through the center point of zero. Okay, and then offset the other way, 101.1 thou. Okay, and drop down to my finished depth. One five six, that's it. And the finishing pass. to the center, the zero. Really is a little delicate slot really. But I just want to make sure it's on its nominal. There we are. Oh, a little bit more. 101. Okay. I'll just bring it back to center. Or near enough. I'm winding back out with a quill. So, very simple now, under the Y, 179 and a half the other way, Oop, I've overshot it, there, and same thing again. Well, I think we'll call it a day on this video at this point, uh, it's a good spot to, uh, to sort of make a break on it. So anyway guys, as per usual, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and we will see you all very soon. Cheers now.